This is Bruce from Printavo here to help these small guys today. Now we're going to be getting shops from zero up to $250,000 with one to two people, okay? There's a lot of people in this bucket that they're able to grow to that point and beyond. Now I'm going to make the assumption that you guys already have the equipment set up and you understand the screen printing process. There's tons of great classes out there that you can look and learn about how to do the, and handle the screen printing process. Today we're gonna to be focusing on the business aspects, how to get your sales up to that point, and what to do. I'm gonna make another assumption here that the majority of your sales are gonna come in through local paths, local channels, the stores around you, the schools, the, the little shops and stores, all of those are going to be the focus on getting your company up to $250,000 in revenue. Now, a little bit of background. I did this. We started a print shop. We were in Champaign, Illinois at University of Illinois, and we started a print shop in the back of a retail location. We didn't have the retail location. We had the back space where we had a 4 by 4 press and grew it really, really quickly. So this is definitely doable. I've been there. I understand. I didn't know anything about printing even before, just like you guys too. But I learned and I evolved and iterated. And that's exactly the tips that I'm going to give you guys right now to help you get to that stage. All right, here we go. First step, focus. If you have multiple businesses, you need to focus on one to help grow it. This stuff takes time. So set your expectations realistically. It's not going to be an overnight success. All right. You're going to need to put in the long hours and work to get this business where you need to go. So focus. You need to be working on sales and marketing and printing. If there are two of you, then one needs to focus mainly on one or the other. The next aspect of focus is in the business. Now first let's talk about artwork. For separating artwork, for digitizing artwork, for vectorizing artwork, because I'm sure you're going to get all kinds of artwork files or already do, take it over to a site like ignitiondrawing.com. You drag the files in and soon after you'll get something back. For 30 bucks you can have it done. Now you need to look at your time, okay? If you're spending X amount of time because you're learning how to do it and that isn't worth it based on $30 paying someone else to do it, then just get it done and move on to the next sale. You've got to have that quick turnover to be able to grow to this size. Now the next piece is the inks. Don't focus on all kinds of inks, just focus on simple plastisol printing. Again, I'm assuming that you guys have already gone through printing classes and understand that aspect, but just focus on that piece. The last aspect here is getting set up with Printavo. Printavo helps you manage the different pieces of your business like invoicing and scheduling and payments. I was right in your spot managing a print shop and growing it to that next stage and that's why we built Printavo to be able to help you guys to get there. Okay, the next piece, number two, is your online presence. This is so important when getting ready to scale the marketing and the sales side. Get set up. If you don't have a website and it doesn't look good, you're losing. You need to go to Wix.com or set up and download a professional WordPress website and get it put on and live and make it look like that you are bigger than you are. You have to seem bigger than you are so that people view that when they go to your website. You don't know how many leads you're going to lose out on for people researching you because they don't think that you can handle their job. So get your website set up immediately with a lot of great content. Spend time doing that. Next, your Facebook account. Again, professionalism is important. Get the banner, the cover photo, everything set up. If you need help from a graphic designer, this initial investment is going to be important. Now, this is going to play a huge role later in the steps. Now, next step is Yelp. Get that going too. Get a few good positive review, good reviews going from past customers. That is really important. That's part of the piece called social proof. When someone goes to your website and they look at you, have you ever been to a restaurant's um, review page on Yelp or others and you said, wow, only two or three stars and not go? That's going to happen a lot to you if you either have poor reviews or you don't have any reviews at all. So get that done. Google Business is another one. Get set up in there. 
that starts to get a little bit more into native, what's called SEO, search engine optimization, so that when people search for a print shop in your area, you begin to come up in the results. Now make sure again, those keywords about you and your local business are in your website too, so Google will crawl those and you'll show up in those engines. Now lastly, social, Twitter, Instagram, any others that you can find, get on it and set up the profile and add as many people to get going as you possibly can. This is gonna, again gonna be very important when we get to the marketing and sales stage and start really pushing hard into the business. Now lastly, email. Gmail is nice, but again, we're talking about professionalism. So if you are shopexample or shopcode.com, set up info at shopco.com and get it done. You could pay for this at Google Apps, but again, it's the professionalism aspect that you wanna set up and make yourself look bigger than you actually are. Okay, the next step here is writing down your target market. Who are you guys gonna go after? Is it a local geographic base area? Is it schools because you do uniforms really well? Is it uniforms for larger companies because you can embroider and put those together very well? Who is it gonna be? Write it down and make sure you know that that's gonna be crucial for this next step. All right, everybody, this is the main piece that we're gonna be talking about. We've got a couple others after, but this is the big one. So drum roll. All right, here we go. Marketing and sales. All right, now everybody tells you, you need to be selling, you need to be out there and doing it. Well, how do you do that to get to the $250,000 mark? View it in two buckets. The first, is online, the second is offline. Customers need to be seeing you everywhere to make a decision to go and use you as a service provider, okay? So you can't just do one or two, you need to be doing it all. Now, we got our online presence set up, so that looks great. So if someone gets a piece of paper from you or has your name on it and they look you up, you're gonna be covered on that end. Very, very important. First thing you're gonna need to do to start generating these sales is take your Google contacts and all of the email addresses that you have in your contact list and you're gonna need to let everybody know what you do. Include a little coupon in there too to help entice people to bring someone in. I'm talking five, 10% max. Now, you're gonna take those and you can put them all into MailChimp or you can email them from Google, MailChimp.com and you're gonna send them, letting them know, hi, I'm Bruce, I'm running this brand new print shop in town. We handle a lot of customers that want custom apparel. Here are a few examples of some customers that we've worked with. We've worked with a bunch of different people over the last X amount of months or years. We're here to help you. Now this is one email and one touch point, but you're gonna to start to do this and set it on your calendar to do this every month. You can automate this in MailChimp, but you're gonna to wanna to start doing this regularly. A little bonus tip is that you can collect more emails from your website using different plugins that people could submit for say a, a discount. Have you ever been to an e-commerce store and they have a pop-up that comes up that says five or 10%, if you give us your email, boom, you collect it and it goes right into your email newsletter list. Now this is gonna create the reactivation. It's not gonna draw immediate tons of sales immediately, but it's gonna be the reactivation to start to bring in a good amount of, uh, of sales that start to come in. Okay, the second aspect that you need to make sure that you do is post everywhere. There shouldn't be a person in your town that doesn't know that you are a printer and that you can help them make custom apparel. Now what that means is you need to be posting on your website, you need to be posting on Facebook, you need to be posting in your blog and Twitter and every single channel where you have friends or family that might know what you're doing, texting people. I'm literally saying if you have a list of, of Gchat contacts or Skype contacts, you need to be going through each one and say, hey, this is Bruce, I'm working on this business, we're growing it, we've got a lot of different custom apparel that we can help you make, here's some great examples, and send it off to them. Keep doing this over and over, spend a day on the weekend or something, and just keep putting that out there. It might not be them, but it could be someone else that they know 
that's gonna bring in that next sale. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, I've already done that. I've posted on Facebook once or twice. No, I guarantee you are not doing it enough. You need to be continually posting and making people aware and telling people. Again, very important push that. That is how we initially grew and got to that first goal of $250,000 by making it aware that this is what we did, wearing shirts and hats and loud different colors that stood out, that said our name and what we did and how to get in touch with us. Okay, this brings me to my next aspect. I'm going to jump offline for a second. Offline marketing, print up some, some postcards or, or, and business cards and make sure you have them everywhere, in your car, in your backpack, in your pockets. Do not ever be without a card and make sure you're handing them out constantly. Anybody, again, that you know at a party that you haven't seen in a while, hey, this is what I'm doing. I just wanted to let you know about it. Make sure they know. Now, anywhere you go, take those postcards and drop them off. If you're at the grocery store, put a couple on the board. If you're at your kid's school, try to leave them at a front desk, anywhere that's just sitting there. What we did, and we were on a campus, is we would go to every business and just leave cards everywhere, on tables and this and that, and every single place you could think of, you would see our card. Make them stand out, neon, anything you have to do, but really important. Again, you cannot be bashful about this. You need to push. Now, I'm gonna hop back online for a second, okay? Let's assume that you're pushing hard in person. Oh, by the way, you must always be, be walking in and be comfortable with the cold aspects of it. So going into the business, walk down the main strip and ask for every single owner and let them know what you're doing. Give them the card, be personable, start creating that network. This takes time. It's not gonna be a boulder immediately. It's gonna start as a pebble and build up and build up and build up from there. Now, hopping back online, Facebook. Facebook is huge for growing that initial sales cycle. So Facebook ads, something to think about, something to try, but start on a small budget. Make sure you target who you're looking for in your area or whoever your target customer is. And then you have to run it over a 90 day period at a minimum. So some people say, hey, I didn't get any sort of results right away. Well, you didn't run it long enough. Also look at your ads. It will work, but you have to keep tweaking it and trying to see what does work. If you're unsure of how to get started, I'm sure there are people that know about how to use Facebook ads in your local area that you can try and work with. A free way to generate Facebook traffic and awareness is contests. Take any local um, event or, or holiday going on, Halloween just passed, ask people to post their favorite costume or their costume and ask them to vote by likes. And the winner will get free shirts, say up to $100. Now, the cost is $100 and a bit of your time, but that will again drive awareness and will bring in a couple different clientele. Now, keep doing this, do this maybe every couple months and that audience grows. This again takes time, you're not gonna get 5,000 likes overnight, it's gonna take a year's period. Instagram, the way Instagram works is it's photos and it's hashtags, okay? So you can post your photos and you want to post your, your past customers and what they look like with their, with their swag and everything on there for really good social proof. To find customers on there, you're gonna to wanna to search for local businesses, you'll follow them, like them, comment on their photos, and you can either automate this by looking for what's called a virtual assistant on Upwork.com or you can automate this with tools like Gramista, for example, and they can help you start to do this. Now, you don't want to look like you're, you, you know, you're a robot, so maybe hiring a virtual assistant, they're anywhere between 3 and $5 um, per hour to be able to do this. Okay, the last piece here is the follow-up. The frequency, the consistency, and following up is gonna be the key aspect into growing to this stage. So if a big sale comes in for a thousand shirts and you're like, holy cow, you need to follow up on them. 
once a week, every couple days, whatever you feel is important, but make sure you keep following up until you receive a no. Now the next aspect is consistency that I talked to you about. You have to do all of this stuff and all the marketing and the posts regularly. We understand that you're busy, you're working, you've got prints, you've got this and that to do, but you cannot go stale with this. You're building a boulder. Boulders are not built overnight, they're built over consistent, long periods of time. So if you need help and you wanna automate little pieces, again, I mentioned the virtual assistant aspect, which is great. You pay someone three to five dollars an hour and they can help you do pieces of repetitive work like social media. The second to last piece that I wanna talk to you about is the aspect of cash. Now cash is very, very important when you get started you cannot, no matter if it's a friend or a, or, or a family, you cannot just do jobs without collecting anything up front. Collect a minimum of 50% up front to get the job done. That's going to cover your cost to get going and then reduce your risk as you get and finalize and wrap up. Now, if they're not willing to do that, that's something you need to really consider if you want to take that risk. There's a lot of horror stories of you floating in, in other shops, floating cash like that, and then they're left out hang, to hang to dry for three, six months before they get paid. Cash is extremely important early on. Take the 50% payment right away. This is the last thing, and that is iterating. You have to look back and say, what did we do last month? What worked well? What didn't work well? And be able to improve upon that on the next month and execute. The reason that people don't grow and, and keep getting larger is because they're not continually executing and thinking about what worked well and what we're going to do next time and improve it and grow that base. Now, I'm already assuming that you know that you have to deliver amazing customer value and help your customers and wow them. So I'm going to focus on this, this whole iterative approach here and just, again, keep thinking about that. So I hope that helps everybody. Feel free to post comments of, of hey, I've got this marketing question or what do I do or I'm stuck here. But this is going to get you with one to two people up to about $250,000 in annual sales. And then from there, we're going to cover the next aspect in our next video part. Again, if you do have questions, this is Bruce from Printavo. We'd love to hear your feedback. You can post it below.